Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope all my students are okay. Well, I'm sure that uh, your answer is yes, and if it is yes, that is a wonderful thing. I also hope that you have started working and thinking like an expert who all the time thinks about what are the rules behind English pronunciation since you are learning nowadays phonetics and phonology and when I say phonology that means I am referring to English language. During the last session we try to understand phonology by applying certain examples and we try to understand some phonological rules not the old ones not the entire ones but some of the rules which are very important I think and sometimes you know as a student of uh, English language we come across because uh, uh, it is possible that when you come across a native speaker uh, certain assimilations, certain dissimulations, certain allegiance are there so that's why I thought uh, it was pro appropriate it was quite appropriate to talk about such rules right so I want to welcome you people to session number 23 all right this is session number 23 you already know that we are very much engaged in understanding phonology and also what are super segmented features at the same time we are concerned with prosody so these are two terms which coincide as you as you already know that okay so let's see what we have to study today what we have to understand today in session number 23 well dear students today we have to talk about the role of articulators in features of pronunciation what is the role of articulators you know them you have seen many diagrams you understand what is the speech mechanism what is the airstream mechanism inside our mouth or inside the body so today we have to understand what is their role in the features of pronunciation what kind of role each and every articulator plays and we have to understand at the same time we have to give some time to to the articulators what are the main articulators what are the other articulators what is their role in English pronunciation or the features of pronunciation so let's start our work in session number 23 this is based on Role of articulators in features of pronunciation. Well, before I talk anything else, it's very important to understand what's written on this slide. You must remember always that speaking involves controlling parts of the mouth and nose to shape the air that comes from the lungs. That's very important. Because we speak. I am speaking, you are listening. You speak, somebody else listens. But what is in fact speaking? That's very important. Simply saying speaking, all right, that, could, that is one of the language skills. That is one of the language skills, this is what we already know. But when I say speaking, remember, it involves controlling parts of the mouth and nose to shape the air that comes from the lungs. That's a very simple statement. But you must understand what is speaking. All right, the question could be, what is speaking? It's a very simple question, what is speaking? And the answer could be many. You can give your own answer, somebody else can give his or her answer. But as a student of phonetics and phonology, and this time as a student of English phonology, you must remember that speaking involves controlling parts of the mouth and nose to shape the air that comes from the lungs. That means when we say speaking, in fact we are shaping the way the environment, the learning environment, the knowledge is prevailing. What is the effort in fact? Why you are receiving BS or MA English degree? Of course you want to have knowledge. You're trying to seek knowledge and you, you are trying to learn skills but why you want because the ultimate 
outcome is the change in the attitude, a change in the behavior. So it's a really simple answer. Okay? So what is speaking then? As a student of phonology should be saying that controlling part of the mouth and nose to shape the air, the way we shape after receiving knowledge, after learning skills, we are shaping our personality in fact. That is the same case over here. Because speaking involves controlling parts of the mouth and nose to shape the air. That comes from the lungs. So that's not a simple story. It's not a simple story that, okay, the air is coming from the lungs and we are just throwing the air outside. But as a student of phonology, there are many things we have to understand. Okay? So this session is primarily on the revision of the names and locations of the articulators that are used to produce the sounds of English. All right? This session primarily, it shall enable us to revise the names and location of the articulators that are used to produce the sounds of English. And what are the articulators, the tongue, lips and teeth, the alveolar ridge, the palate, the vellum and the nasal activity and their role? It's very important to understand why we are revising because we must be knowing what are these articulators and what is their role. Each and every articulator plays a significant role. And this is what as a student of phonology we must know. Are you getting my point? Now I want you to check yourself. I want you to check yourself. Very simple activity. I shall give you time. You have to think. You have to recall the things. You have to recall whatever we have done, what we have, whatever we have tried to understand. The question is, which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word minor? The question is, which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word minor? Six articulators have been presented. I mean, not only six, but there are many. I mean, six categories are there. The question is, which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word minor? Lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, or tongue and vellum. I repeat, you have to check yourself. And the question is, which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word minor? Lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alve alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, tongue and vellum. So what is your answer? That's very important. You have to think about the sound. First of all, what are the sounds present in this word? The total sounds, they are m, i, n, and uh. How many sounds? M, I, N, and A. Uh. Okay? And the question is, which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word minor? And the answers are there. Simply you have to find out what are the articulators involved. Question number two is, which articulators are responsible for the final sound in the word wit? Which articulators are responsible 
for the final sound in the word wit. The answers are lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, or tongue and vellum. The question is, you are checking yourself, remember, I want you to check yourself. You can write down the answer on the answer sheet, wherever you are. Which articulators are responsible for the final sound in the word wit? Lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, tongue and vellum. Okay? Now question number three. Which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word photography? I repeat. Which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word photography? The answers are lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, or tongue and vellum. I repeat. Which articulators are responsible for the first sound in the word photography? The first sound of photography. The answers are lips, lips and teeth, tongue and teeth, tongue and alveolar ridge, tongue and palate, and tongue and vellum. So you have to underline or you have to write down the answer, the correct answer on the answer sheet. Okay? Well, before we talk about anything else, I think we have to think about the question which I raised and uh, I put on you people by saying that check yourself. I wanted to know about the articulators involved in the production of some sounds. The first was, what are the articulators involved in the production of the first sound of the word minor? My second question was, what are the articulators involved in the production of the last sound of wit? That is T. And my third question was, what are the articulators involved in the production of the first sound of the word photography? That means I was asking about M sound, T sound and F sound. That means again that I want to know what are the articulators involved in the production of M sound? And then I was interested to know what are the articulators involved in the production of T sound? And finally, I wanted to ask what are the articulators involved in the production of F sound? I hope you've got your answers. After having given the answers, it's very important to think about the articulators. And I want you to recall now the articulators. And at the same time, you must recall the articulatory phonetics. At the same time, you must try to recall the classification of consonant sounds. And of course, at the same time, the understanding of vowel sounds. But most importantly, what you are to do is that you have to understand the role of articulators. What is the role? One articulator or the articulators or all articulators, they, they play in the production of speech sounds. And the first articulator we have to talk about is the pharynx. Now if there is a question, what is pharynx? 
The answer could be that it is a tube which begins just above the larynx and the top end is divided into two. The first, that it is a tube which begins just above the larynx and its top end is divided into two. A, the back of the mouth. B, beginning of the way through the nasal cavity. One is the back of the mouth. The second is beginning of the way through the nasal cavity. So this is what we call pharynx, which is a tube whose top end is divided into two. The first one is the back of the mouth. The second is the beginning of the way through the nasal cavity. Now you can recall some sort of diagram which I presented before you time and again and you can visualize what could be these parts. The back of the mouth and the beginning of the way through the nasal cavity. Back of the mouth. For example, back of the mouth, say for example that is soft palate area. What happens over there? What happens over there? So that part in fact plays the role of stopping the air going to oral cavity when we are producing nasal sounds such as m, n and ing. So that is the role played by that particular area. And then the second articulator is the velum or the soft palate. This is what I was talking about. Right? What is vellum? If there is a question, what is vellum? The answer is the vellum is raised so that air cannot escape through the nose. Okay? Vellum is raised. Soft palate. For example, if the speaker is not using nasal sound, that means this part plays another role. It stops the air. It stops the air going to nasal area or nasal cavity right and directs the air to go to oral cavity so remember when the tongue is in contact with the lower side of the vellum sounds such as k and g are produced k g now you can detect that they are not nasal sounds we cannot uh, feel air stream through the nostrils. No, not at all. We are not throwing it out through the nostrils. We are in fact throwing it out. How? Yes, exactly. Through the mouth. But that's very important. That the second main articulator is vellum or the soft palate. Are you getting my point? So what happens? It plays a role to produce sounds like k and g. This time I'm saying k, g. So you can understand, you can just say after me these sounds and you can feel that this is the role soft palate plays in the production of the sounds like k and g. Well, the third main articulator is the hard palate. It is also the upper roof of the mouth and it has smooth curved surface. It is called the upper roof of the mouth and it has smooth curved surface. That's very important to understand. Now it is not active articulator, always remember. It is passive articulator and the three different areas of alveolar ridge, of course, hard palate. It's one of the areas the entire ridge and then hard palate behind the upper two teeth right hard area starts all right so it is also called the upper roof of the mouth which has got smooth curved surface the fourth one is alveolar ridge it is between the top front teeth and the hard palate It is between the top front teeth and the hard palate. Its surface is covered with little ridges 
There are certain bridges, always remember. If you try to see, for example, it's very difficult to see inside our mouth. But if you can, you can see in front, you can stand in front of the mirror, you can try to see that it's difficult. You can have certain diagrams to understand what are these little ridges. And remember what the role it plays, this part plays, this articulator plays. Sounds made by the tongue touching this area such as tada are called alveolar sounds. So what is the role this part plays? That's important to understand. When we are to produce sounds like t or d, this articulator is playing its role. That's why these sounds are called alveolar sounds, t and d. Our fifth main articulator is the tongue. As I told you time and again that it's the most important articulator. It is the most active articulator. And remember this articulator can be moved into many different places and different shapes. And time and again I told you that when we are just listening someone, so the speaker is in front of us, we are primarily concerned with the lips or sometimes teeth or the sometimes tongue. Tongue is all, si all the time inside our mouth. Sometimes we can see the tongue, but this is what we see the lips or sometimes teeth. So we must not ignore the most important articulator that is tongue, which plays the significant role in the production of speech sounds. So it can be moved into many different places and different shapes. The three prominent parts it has, one is the tip of the tongue, the other one is the blade and third one is the back. So these are the parts and the major parts of tongue. But remember the most significant role played by any articulator is tongue primarily. That is the most active, most active articulator. Is it clear? Our next articulators are the teeth. My dear students, as you know that we have got upper teeth and lower teeth. But remember what is the role these articulators play is very important. Although they are not active articulators, the way tongue is, but remember sounds with the tongue touching the front teeth such as th and the are called dental sounds. Th and the. Th and the. I repeat, the sound th. You can feel that the tip of the tongue is touching the inside of front two teeth. Of front teeth. Th. Thick. Thin through. Or the other sound is the, this, that, these, those. They are known as dental sounds but the role played by teeth is very important. The upper teeth are stopping tongue and the tongue tip is touching the up inside of upper teeth. Right? And that's why these two dental sounds are produced with the help of teeth. Front teeth, th and the. But remember the lips which we have to call them that that lips can be, lips can be but I'm talking about the articulators of lips and the lips can be pressed together to produce bilabial sounds such as per and ber. Now our seventh articulators are or the seventh main articulator is the lips which can be pressed together to produce bilabial sounds such as per and b. Lips. What role lips play? That's very important to understand. All bilabial sounds for example it's only per b but m can be added. Right? When pressed together they produce what? 
Of course, per and per. Of course, ma at the same time. But that's the role played by the lips. Then, for example, the another one is when brought into contact with teeth to produce labiodental sounds such as f and v. F and v. Upper teeth, lower lip. All right? When the lower lip is in contact with the upper teeth, the sounds produced are f and v. At the same time, there is a sound that is vowel sound primarily. Ooh. What happens in fact? We round sometimes, right? We round the lips. It can be rounded to produce lip shape for vowels like oo. So when we want to produce a sound oo, we have to round our lips. So that is the part played by our lips. So can be pressed together to produce bilabial sounds such as per and ber brought into contact with teeth to produce labial sounds such as f and v can be rounded to produce lip shape for vowels like oo okay well after understanding what are the seven main articulators and their role in the production of certain speech sounds it's very important that we must remember three more articulators we must remember three more articulators as I told you, all speech organs are important, but some are very important, they are the main articulators, but these three are also very significant, and we try to understand their role, their name, their role. The first one is larynx. It's very complex and independent articulator. Adam Sapple. Adam Sapple, which vibrates when you produce the voice sounds such as z, z, all right, whatever the voice sounds are, all right, the role is played by this part of our speech mechanism. The second is jaws. The movement, the movement of the jaws, especially the lower one, helps a lot in speaking. Now the lower jaw is all the time busy and when if you want to understand it uh, in another way, I would like to suggest that you must stand in front of the mirror and you must try to speak and you can see that your lower jaw is moving a lot. So the movement of the jaw, especially the lower one, helps a lot in speaking. All right. Then na nose or the nasal cavity. Nose or nasal cavity. I told you as I told you, that there are certain sounds which are produced through this cavity, nasal cavity. And time and again, I told you and telling you again, very important part of our vocal apparatus of making sounds. So the entire apparatus is what you know. We use this term in the beginning of our sessions or of our, our semester. I had a talk with you that when you say sound making apparatus, Okay, sound making apparatus. So very important role is played by uh, this part of the nasal cavity. We can we, we can say specifically when we are producing nasal sounds such as m, n, and ing. And I told you there are three nasal sounds which are produced uh, through a nasal cavity. So they are very important. Not only those seven, but these three are also very important to remember. And at the same time, it's very important for you people to. Understand the, uh, understand the role played by these 7 plus 3 articulators. Of course, uh, articulators, if I say articulated lungs, all right, they are also articulated, but they, they are not playing that role, but they are all the time just, you know, pumping the air outside and throwing the air up upwards. But then, in fact, you know, trachea and trachea, the windpipe and then the larynx, you know, and afterwards, the whole world starts. The the world of sound starts. The processor gives shapes to certain, or rather it directs certain speech organs to, to produce this kind of sound. But that's very important to understand what is the role played by each and every articulator in the production of speech sounds. It could be larynx, jaws, nasal cavity, whatever else, okay?
Well, my dear students, whatever we have been talking about, so far as the 7 plus 3 articulators are concerned, of course, when I said 7, that means 7 main articulators, and I added 3 more to them. We try to understand the role played by each and every articulator. I'm not saying that uh, one is superior to others. Why? I'm not saying that which one is superior and which one is not superior. All articulators are equally important, but sometimes what happens according to the nature of sound, speech sound, one articulator plays this role. <coughs> it plays, plays its role. But at the end what happens, we are left with the sound, whatever the sound these articulators produce. For instance, as I told you that tongue is the main articulator in the sense because it is moving all the time. It is moving all the time. It is touching different parts of our other articulators. It could be teeth, it could be alveolar ridge, okay? Sometimes it is allowing, it is allowing the air to pass, pass alongside of its own three parts, that is front, blade and back. In the case of blur sound, for example, you can feel that how air is passing, passing from the both sides of a tongue, all right? So I don't want to say that uh, tongue is the uh, uh, most important, but I think what I'm suggesting is there is there are the roles played by each and every articulator. And this slide, which is in front of you, whatever I said, whatever I have elaborated, you can see in this diagram, right, starting from larynx, you can see Okay, vocal folds, vocal cords, Adam's apple, then pharynx, uvula, soft palate, and then you can see alveolar ridge, hard ridge in the soft palate. You can see the tongue and diff different parts of tongue. You can see teeth, okay, upper teeth, lower teeth, and you can see upper lip and lower lip. At the same time you can see nose and on that we can see nasal cavity. So all these articulators are very much in front of you. I want you to store in your mind that what is the position of each and every articulator okay and what kind of role each one of them plays in the production of speech sounds. Is it clear? Well after understanding the main articulators and some other articulators and what is the role played by each and every articulator and after having seen the diagram when I was talking about the speech sounds the traditional phonemes now the sounds are in front of you that means 44 phonemes when you're talking about the articulators and the role of these articulators, in fact, the role of articulator is associated with the production of these 44 sounds of English or 44 traditional phonemes of English. I told you time and again that we have got consonants and vowels. Consonants and vowels. So that means these articulators play their significant role in the production of 24 consonants after which we have got 15 voiced consonants and 9 voiceless consonants. By this time all of you understand what is voiced and what is not voiced. That means any sound if vibrating that is called voiced sound and any sound which is not vibrating that means that is a voiceless sound. So these articulators in fact play their role in the production of these consonants. I'm not talking about the classification. If we talk about the classification again these articulators are primarily the contributors to classify the sounds or the consonant sounds for, uh, for, for instance. If I say bilabial sound why I'm saying bilabial sound? 
I am saying bilabial sound because of the role played by two lips, upper lips and lower lips. And when they play their role, that means we are in the position to produce bilabial sounds, which are per, b, m, and sometimes w is also included. But most popularly, p, b, and m are bilabial sounds. That means upper lips and the lower lips, they are playing their role in the production of these sounds. That's why these sounds are called bilabial sounds. Similarly, if I am saying one particular sound is voiced, for example, the sound z, z. Now the other articulator is playing the role. We can feel vibration if we put our thumb or finger on Adam's apple. We can feel vibration. So vibration is where? Yes, exactly. At the articulator. Okay? So this is the role played by the articulator. Another articulator, not like lips. So we have got 24 consonants and we have got two categories. One is the voiced consonants, the other one is the voiceless consonants. The second one is vowels. When we talk about vowels, remember, there are three categories. Two are in front of you, pure vowels and diphthongs. Total 20 vowel sounds. 12 are pure vowels, single vowel sounds, and out of 12, we have 5 long vowel sounds and 7 short vowel sounds. And the next category is the diphthong, diphthong or double sound. Double sound. There is a glide like A. I, oi, okay? What happens in fact? <clears throat> Everything happens inside the vocal box. But the articulators, for example, you can see you in front of the mirror, you can stand and you can, you can see the position of your lips in the production of your vowel sounds. For example, if you say O, oh, there is another position of your lips or your mouth. When you, when you say ah, another position. When you say ah, oh, another position. When you say ah, absolutely another position. So this is what the role which is played by all these articulators, the contributors in the production of speech sounds. We simply listen sounds or we hear sounds or speech sounds precisely speaking but the role is very significant which is played by the articulators whatever starting from our lips to the lungs. So from lungs to lips there is a complete world and this is the world we have to understand. Is it clear? Now the second thing we have to understand the feature of pronunciation. What are features of pronunciation? You have already discussed about, about these features. This is what you also call suprasegmental features. Well, what happens? In fact, these are the major articulators or the main articulators or the articulators which make us understand the intonation, stress, word stress and sentence stress. This is what we call suprasegmental features. But remember, behind them, if I am speaking a sentence, for instance, do you remember the sentence, she is a good lawyer? Yes, exactly. Now think about the articulators which are in fact making us understand the distinction when I say this sentence three times, each time the articulators are moving in a different way. Now listen to me. She is a good lawyer. 
he is a good lawyer. He is a good lawyer. Now you can understand how the articulators can readjust themselves inside our mouth, even to produce these supra, supra segmental features. So always remember the significant. So the significant part is always played by the articulators. Is it clear? Of course, it was not as necessary to talk about or to present this slide, but I thought it's, it's, it, uh, it was convenient, or it is convenient, that you must be knowing that each and everything is connected with one another. Okay. Well, let's do some activities. These are the activities which I want you to do when you are free. Yes, after watching this particular session, I want you to sit alone and do these activities. It is possible that to do these activities, sometimes you need to refer to some sessions, some other sessions, some previous sessions, or you have to refer to the material I already provided you. Or whatever the material you have, your own material, you can take the assistance from that material. Now, these are the activities you have to do. Number one, <clears throat> list the differences in production and function of vowels versus consonants. What you need to do? You have to list the differences in the production and function of vowels versus consonants. What is the way to produce vowels and consonants? and what are the ways or what are the function of vowels and consonants. So this is what activity or the first activity you need to do or you have to do. Okay? Second is identify the three descriptive parameters that are used for vowel articulations and classify the vowels of British English using those three parameters three parameters. Do you remember? Yes, when we talked about the description of vowels, we talked about these parameters. And I want you to classify the vowels of British English. I want you to classify the vowels of British English using those three parameters. Okay? The next one is differentiate between monophone and diphthong vowels. I have just talked about monophthongs and diphthongs when I was having a talk on the 44 traditional phonemes. So you have to differentiate between monophthong, a pure vowel, a single vowel and diphthong vowels. Then the next activity you need to do is, I want you to define diphthongs. Define diphthongs. The next one is identify the four parameters that are used to describe the articulation of consonants. I want you to identify the four parameters that are used to describe the articulation of consonants. Right? We talked about these parameters in detail and not once, not twice, for, for more than four or five times. I talked about these parameters, so I want you to identify the four parameters that are used to describe the articulation of consonants. Okay. Our next activity is define the various manners of articulation. Do you remember that we talked in detail, we analyzed each and everything comprehensively? when we were talking about manners of articulation, when we were engaged to understand the consonants. I hope you remember three areas, voicing, place of articulation, and manner of articulation. Okay, so it is possible that you have to refer to that session in which we talked about manners of articulation, so I want you 
to define the various methods of articulation. Our next activity is classify the consonants of British English according to their organ, place, manner and voicing characteristics. Do you remember that we did? We first of all picked up voicing, then place of, argon, uh, place of articulation and manner of articulation. At the same time we try to understand the speech mechanism. So for this particular activity what you need to do that you have to refer to some sessions, not one session but maybe more than two or three sessions. You can just replay those sessions and you can watch them carefully. You have to talk and you have to classify the consonants of British English according to, the, according to their organ, place, manner and voicing characteristics. All right. Well, the last activity which you are required to do is to understand the importance of syllable structure in the assessment process. What is the syllable structure? I want you to think about that. It is possible some of you are a little confused. But remember, what you need to do is that, that if you have not read about that, think about that, think about that, your answer could be, in the negative that makes no difference at all when you are doing some sort of activity one of the answer could be that I don't know that doesn't mean that you know nothing that means that you want to know about that so you must think about the importance of syllable structure the material which you have definitely has got the answer I want you to look for that and I want you to understand I'm not saying you have to tell me I'm not saying that you have to write. I'm simply saying that you have to understand the importance of syllable structure in the assessment process. When you are assessing someone, when you are ass assessing someone, and for example, if you're assessing the spoken uh, English of somebody and you present uh, or you give some sentences to the student and you want the student to present his or her knowledge about the syllable structure, what are the stages, what are the things he or she is to consider, that's very important. So you, by yourself first of all, you have to understand what is the importance of syllable structure or syllable structure in the assessment process. When you are assessing someone, okay, when you are assessing someone's speech, so what are the ways you can uh, apply or you can, uh, I mean, what are the yardstick you can apply uh, to understand that one knows, okay, he is the person or she is the person who knows what is syllable structure, okay? Well, last but not the least, I always emphasize uh, on this part of my session, that is the self-assessment component of the session. <clears throat> Today we talked about the role of articulators in the production of speech sounds. We try to understand what are these articulators. And more or less we talked about 10 major articulators. Not, I'm not saying that all these are only the major ones, but I think each and every speech organ which is playing its role is major and important articulator. But we try to understand 10 different articulators and their role. What is the role played by each and every articulator in the production of speech sound? This is what we try to understand today. Yes, we try to understand through narration, we try to understand through samples, we try to understand through diagrams. At the same time, I gave you some activities which you need to do when you are free at your home. But these activities are not based on today's session only, but these activities are primarily based on certain sessions, previous sessions. 
I'm not saying that you have to recapitulate all the sessions, but I'm saying that you have to focus on some particular sessions to do these activities. But so far as the self-assessment component is concerned, that is a separate work you have to do. As I told you time and again, that the most important thing for the students, for the learner, is the activity. You can coin your own activities, you can refer to some material, you can, you can refer to online exercises, and so far as phonetics and phonology, especially phonology is concerned, you've got many exercises available online. You can play, you can answer, you can speak, you can record your voice, many things are there, many opportunities are there, many activities are there. And when you get yourself engaged in some sort of activity, always remember, you become an active learner. That's why the instructors suggest you. And I, as an instructor, suggest why? Not as an instructor, but as a facilitator of learning. If you get yourself engaged in these activities, that means you become learner or you are facilitator of learning. When you are the facilitator of learning, that means you are stamping on me that this person is also facilitator of learning rather than instructor only. Is it clear? So, for today's task, for today's self-assessment component, what we have? We have what is the role of articulators in the production of speech sounds. I want you to explain the role of articulators in the production of speech sound. So thank you very much for this session. From my side, goodbye and good luck. Stay blessed.